Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 2. We're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for the episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so a lot went down in this episode. You had the Team Supergirl stuff, and you had Supergirl meeting her father, none other than zor inside the Phantom Zone. That stuff was really good. Also, you had the Lex Luthor trial going on. And I thought overall this episode was a mixed bag. And I'm going to get into my reasons why I didn't like some of the stuff. But it must be mentioned that I really did like the Phantom Zone scenes and the Lex Luthor scenes. I thought they were very good. And as always, Melissa and John Cryer were really good. Also, Jason Bear was very good as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So we get the introduction of Silas this alien from a vampire planet called Transylvain. And so he's introduced, and this scene was not very good, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure we can all agree this was not the best fight scene that we've ever seen on Supergirl. And so this guy, he pretends to be a vampire, he's rubbing this blood bank, and there are a whole bunch of cringy lines like, why is McGowan popping up and saying boo? Why when he opens the door and Brainy comes in, why does Brainy say this is going to suck for you? And then why do they say gotcha when they get him? These were just some of the moments in that opening scene that just felt very off. It felt very choppy and it felt a bit rushed. So Team Supergirl recruits Silas to save Supergirl from the Phantom Zone. He basically explains his connection with the Phantom Zone and the fact that his husband was sent there. So this was something that was leaked a while ago and we knew was coming. And yeah, I get that he tried to break in. That is obviously very interesting that he has knowledge of the Phantom Zone. I think that's the most interesting part of Silas's character. However, the way they introduced him and what they did with him this episode felt very weird and didn't feel like he was like a proper character, but more so he was there to serve like a plot purpose. And so, yeah, just starting off like that, obviously not a good start. And that's just my personal opinion. Maybe you guys completely disagree with me. However, then we go over to Supergirl. He was in the Phantom Zone and these scenes were amazing. I loved Melissa and Jason Bear together as the father-daughter duo. Obviously, they get up to some stuff. And you have Supergirl waking up inside the Phantom Zone. And she is being attacked by the Phantoms. So she screams, her eyes turn white because she is being possessed and taken over by them. And so this is a big part of the episode and it's going to be a big part of the next couple of episodes. Like at least five more episodes on top of this. So we're going to see her inside the Phantom Zone and them trying to leave. And so the ending of the episode definitely teases that somehow they're going to get through one of those portals that you saw the Phantoms going through. And so... I'm really excited for all of this stuff, so that was like definitely the best part. Okay, so basically we go back to Team Supergirl, you have them with Silas, and John's brother talks about how he knew about Silas's attempt to break into the Phantom Zone. Again, very convenient. And then they talk about how the nightmares become your reality and the Phantoms basically take over you, and that's where the Phantom Zone gets a name. It's not just like a lost zone in the middle of space and time. It's actually real phantoms who affect you, and that's why it gets its name. And so this was obviously necessary to give us some insight about these phantoms who were heavily featured in this episode. Then we get a talk with Brainy, who's talking to Nia. They have a few really nice moments throughout this episode. And like I said, it's just a few moments that felt off with some of our characters, but then they had some great moments just together. Like Nia and Brainy together, they were really impressive last week. They had some great scenes. And this scene was very good, so Brainy talks to Nia and basically encourages her that she is going to be the one to find Supergirl. And, you know, throughout this episode she has doubts about herself, but Brainy really encourages her. So I like that stuff. Okay, so Katko is back. We get to see them trying to do an expose on Lex in order to expose him before the trial and basically get people to rally behind making Lex guilty. And so you have Nia and William, they have a couple of scenes. Also, William is reacting to Lex's trial. That is his kind of main purpose in this episode. Obviously, it's not much screen time, and there is not really a reason for his reactions. I guess they just needed someone to be watching on TV. And so you have this Lex and Lillian scene at the start, where they're in prison, they talk, and so they remember some stuff, but Lena has only erased Kara's identity. 
And I still have to question why Lena didn't just erase their minds completely. Like, she could have stopped this from all happening, and what happens at the end of the episode with Lex being exonerated, she could have stopped that. So that is obviously just a thing that I'm thinking in my mind. What happens if Lena did do this? And everything would have turned out very differently. And so Lex has a plan, he reveals. We get to see that plan playing out later in the episode. So then we go back to the Phantom Zone. And so Supergirl wakes up and meets sor This was a great moment. Like, you get to see them meeting for the first time in such a long time. You're questioning, how has he survived? How is he here? Basically, they explain how he got here, that he sent himself to the Phantom Zone in order to save his life after he protected Argo and he was on Krypton and then, you know, he opened the portal and went in there and he's been stuck here ever since. That was kind of how I presumed they would go ahead with it and I think Jason does a really good job as zor in this episode. Obviously, he is a recasting, but it worked really well and I really like that dynamic. And so Kara reveals to him Argo survived because of you. He realizes my daughter's alive, my wife is alive on Argo. So they're definitely leading up to him and Kara escaping the Phantom Zone and actually being a team together. We don't know if he's going to turn out to be a villain. It doesn't seem like he is because he seems like such a good guy. He is Kara's father after all. However, we have been speculating maybe at some point we get a twist that maybe the Phantoms have taken over him so badly that he becomes a villain. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll get into that more in extra videos, like bonus videos, and we'll talk about him potentially being the villain. But for now, he's really cool and he's really nice, and it's great to see Kara having this relief, being like, my father's alive, this is amazing. And so Supergirl believes that the Phantom Zone is worse than when she was here before. This is obviously because she was in her pod the whole time last time she was here, when she got knocked off course. And at this point, she's already been affected and attacked by the Phantoms, as you saw at the start of the episode. And so she talks about how everyone was dead. And so it turns out what she was talking about was this specific nightmare. However, she reveals it wasn't a nightmare, and it was what happened in Season 3 when Rain attacked everyone, and you had that version of the timeline where mon died. You had everyone else dying, and so Kara reveals that is her worst nightmare for that to actually happen in the real timeline. And so it's a memory that she has been blocking out, but then it's suddenly come back to the surface because of the Phantoms. And so this bit was really affecting and I really loved that they brought this up because that was a traumatic moment in Kara's history and they don't often reference stuff like this because it was just a moment in time but Kara is right, like this was important and so you keep on getting these references to Legion of Superheroes, you keep on getting these references to mon and these past events. I'm suggesting, I think there is definitely something going on with the Legion and they are definitely setting up Nia and Brainy to go off into the future, and potentially Supergirl as well. So, there was Legion references with Brainy this episode. Last episode, you had Nia basically becoming a Legionnaire, and this talking about mon and everything. This isn't by accident. And with Jesse Raff saying they're doing a Legion-like storyline, which we have not seen yet, I'm really curious, is it going to be more Legion-like than we thought? Because they're definitely teasing that. But anyway, moving back to Kara and zor -El. so Supergirl believes that she can escape the Phantom Zone, but her dad warns her, you can't escape, and there is no way to get out. So zor -El is very pessimistic about getting out because he's been here so long, he's been trapped, he's been affected by the Phantoms for all these many years. But Kara being a superhero and being Supergirl, she wants to escape and she has faith that they will escape. Then we go back to Earth, you have Alex who believes that they will save Kara by sundown. Obviously this doesn't come to fruition. Then you have Lex who is going to the court, kind of like Batman vs Superman and the trial of Lex Luthor. And this is another point that I had where I was like, huh, I'm not sure about this. Like, it felt very off. Now, I want to know your opinions in the comments below. But I felt like Jean was very out of character this episode. So Jean gets mad at Silas in this one scene, and he is extremely mad, and it's completely out of nowhere. Like, Silas has done nothing wrong. Like, he's just trying to make this machine work. And Jean just suddenly snaps at him, and for me, it was very out of character. Like, even if he cares that much about Kara, he's an honorable person, and he doesn't get angry, and he doesn't snap at people. It was totally out of character, so that was one of my biggest issues in this episode. He felt like he wasn't himself, which was 
very weird. So let me know your opinions in the comments below, but that was just my thoughts. Okay, so going back to Lex, you have this whole trial throughout this episode. Obviously, you have the stuff with Lena as well, and her basically listening into the trial, and she shows up at some point. And so, in the trial, Lex actually sets up Eve. Eve is supposed to be the person to fully expose Lex, but he, being the manipulator that he is, is able to set up Eve and convince the jury that he's innocent, basically. And so, he's more like a lawyer and a judge rather than a defendant because he's going on on these long talking sprees and I'm just surprised that they let him do that. However, it was very cool. I think John is great as Lex and giving him this much time to shine was just fantastic. And the scenes with Lex this episode and the scenes with Melissa inside the Phantom Zone with Jason Bear as zor really just went to show how kind of weak the other stuff was in the episode, which was weird because Team Supergirl is normally great, John's normally great, Alex is normally great. However, they felt a bit off this episode. So I really liked the Phantom Zone scenes with Melissa and Jason. And then also I thought John Cryer and Katie McGrath were really, really solid in this episode. So it's a weird mix. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So Lena meets up with Lillian. She is afraid about Lex taking over the company. Basically, she tries to buy her off. She's basically trying to keep the Luther name in a good standing, and that's just her whole goal throughout this episode, and I mean, it's always been her goal. Anyway, so Lena could be exposed if she testifies. That does happen at the end of the episode. There is a talk at the end during one of the like news reports on the TV saying that Lena might have exposed herself. Maybe she's going to get into trouble sometime later in the season with some of the exploits that she's done in the past that are quite questionable. But anyway, let's go back to Brainy and Nia. You have them creating a Phantom Zone projection simulation. And so it goes wrong. And when Nia is trying to divine where Kara is, I think that was a new word that they made up. Normally they call it dreaming. Like she would normally go into her dreams and see it. So I don't know if that is like a new power or they just slightly altered the name, but I just kept on noticing that throughout this episode. But you see Kara and Alex when they were young in high school. You're like, what is going on here? This is definitely setting up the two part episode we're going to be seeing because we know there is some form of crossover between Nia and Brainy who are from the present, and young Kara and Alex in the past. So I definitely think that's what they were setting up at that point because you saw the signs say Midvale High School, and we know that in episode five and six, we're going to be having a two-part Midvale flashback episode, and somehow Brainy and Nia play into that. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So Nia gets attacked by this phantom, and then this is where Brainy references Legion of Superheroes. He says everything we did was through Supergirl, you know, through her influence. That was a lot of the talk in season three with Monel and Imra, and also Brainy was about how Supergirl inspired the Legion of Superheroes. And so Brainy convinces Nia that she is worth it as a hero. She is a great hero and she is worthy of Supergirl. So that was a great moment with Brainy and Nia. Going back to the Phantom Zone, Supergirl talks to zor as he sleeps and she promises to get them out of there. So she walks out of the cave and she is overtaken by Phantoms once again. zor comes out and saves her by waving this thing around that you can see on the screen right here. And Basically, Supergirl realizes it's going to be a lot harder to escape than she initially thought. She doesn't have powers or anything, and that's because the Phantom Zone has no sun, so her powers are powered by solar radiation, well, specifically yellow sun radiation. So at this point, back in the cave after Zoro has saved Kara, he reveals that he's not like he used to be. He is not her normal version of her father. Maybe this is kind of a teaser for him twisting at some point. However, they agree to make their way out as a team. This happens as zor realizes that she is determined to get out of here, and if she is going to do it, he is obviously going to help her. So you had so many great scenes with those two together because it was kind of cutting between the scenes on Earth, and then it was a really great relief every time we went to the Phantom Zone because Melissa and Jason were so good. Okay, so you have Lena turning up who testifies against Lex, William is reacting and watching on TV. Obviously, he's just acting as the reaction, like a spokesperson for the audience, I guess. And so it's Lex versus Lena. Really great scene. And so Lex is very convincing. John is obviously fantastic. And overall, he wins the trial. He's found not guilty. You're like, what the hell? 
but I mean, it's kind of obvious that was going to happen because of how convincing he was and how he was able to sway people by just his words. And so that's going to be his thing throughout at least the first half of this season. He's going to be a very powerful person because now he is exonerated. He is in fact not a criminal as he was painted out to be to the public. However, obviously we know that he is a criminal and Lena is going to be trying to prove that he is a criminal. That is going to be her kind of main arc separate from Supergirl at the start of the season. Obviously she's going to be playing a big part in Team Supergirl, but not just quite yet. Okay, so the Phantom Zone portal opens you get to see that the Phantom Zone is different. And so, I don't know why it looked different, but it didn't really look different for me, but Team Supergirl, like Neo, was like, this is not how your projections look. But it turns out that because of Crisis, the Phantom Zone has been split into multiple dimensions. And so the portal they open up to is in fact not Supergirl's portal. So that's not where she is. She is in a different dimension of the Phantom Zone, thought this was a really cool twist that they came up with and so you have team supergirl facing off against the three or so phantoms that escape through that portal and they come to earth so they are going to be a big part of the antagonism facing against team supergirl at least in the first half of the season while supergirl is locked away and obviously how silas ends this episode the phantom is literally still on earth so he's going to be roaming around and Silas has been affected. And so overall, I'm not a fan of Silas. That was another problem I had. I felt like his story was rushed and it was all to get to the point where he's gonna help Team Supergirl to try and open up a Phantom Zone portal. And so I just think it's very unconvincing. I don't know if it's the actor or if it's more so the writing, but I can't crack it down. However, I'm gonna give him another shot. Obviously this is his first episode but I just didn't really like his stuff that much apart from his ending, which was cool because it kind of introduced the idea of this phantom still being on Earth and that's gonna come and haunt Team Supergirl. Okay, so let's move over. We got the phantoms, they're shooting off against Team Supergirl. They're using their hands. They're able to like shoot these kind of blasts. It looked pretty cool. I thought their makeup was very cool and I think they are very scary. And so Silas sends them packing, they go away. And so in conclusion, they aren't able to get Kara out of the Phantom Zone. And Alex is very much so affected by this because she thought she was gonna have her back ASAP because they thought they were good enough and it was gonna be easier than they thought. And so back at the apartment with like a bunch of takeaway food ready for Kara coming back, Kelly comforts Alex and all of her doubts because she thinks that Supergirl may never come back and so Kelly is like, this could take a while and you're just going to have to accept that. And that is actually true. Like, we have to accept that Kara is not going to be with Team Supergirl for a while. But I don't think that is actually the worst thing because, like I said, this episode was so good inside the Phantom Zone. Those scenes were super interesting. So I can't wait to see what else happens inside the Phantom Zone with Supergirl and Zorel facing off against the actual Phantoms. And as I referenced before, how this episode ends, you have Silas who is overcome by that phantom and the phantom literally pops out of him. And so he's still there, he's in his apartment and he calls for help and it seems like how the episode is gonna start next, that being episode three that is coming next week on Tuesday, he's probably gonna be attacked by this phantom and Team Supergirl is gonna have to help him. Probably Jean's gonna help. And so you have, at the end of the episode, Supergirl and Zorel. They see some phantoms going through a portal. And Zorel notes that he's never seen them do anything like this. He hasn't seen them traveling through portals. That basically teases the idea of the Phantom Zone being in like multiple dimensions. So that's how they travel. And that is a way that Kara and Zorel can escape. That is their new mission. And so Kara says, I guess we're going to have to catch ourselves a phantom great last line of the episode super excited to see them actually catch that phantom and to see them trying to break through into one of these portals because it's very limited but i think they're going to get close to getting back obviously i don't think it's going to be very successful considering that she's going to be stuck there for at least like four or five more episodes but overall the kind of gist of my thoughts for this episode i thought that kara was great and Zorel was great lex was great I thought lena was really good but then you had some very poor writing with some of the team supergirl members however when they were alone like the neo and brainy scenes 
they were really good, but then when they were with like everyone else at the start of the episode, that introduction scene with Silas was really bad, like it was very rushed and it just kind of looked a bit comic. And I don't mean it in the way that it looks like a comic book, I mean it like looks kind of silly, like a spoof. So that's down to multiple scenes, it's definitely the execution of the scene and how they shot it, it just didn't look very convincing. However, I think the biggest problem with this episode was the writing, and especially with Jean, like, what the hell was he doing? Like, that scene with Silas was completely out of character, it was not Jean. So, that's where one of my biggest problems came in. Also, I thought McGann didn't have any use in this episode. Like, why is she here? She's just here to say a few lines and support Jean, and it just seemed like every moment that she was in was kind of force with Jean, so I feel like it was just like specifically those two and Silas that didn't come off right in this episode, whereas like McGann is normally cool, so I don't get why it felt so off this episode. I don't know if you guys share the same thoughts, but let me know down in the comments below what are your general thoughts on this episode. I thought it was very good for some parts, and I thought it was poor for other parts. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a longer video, however, if you stuck around, thank you guys very much. Also, remember, a couple of hours later, we're going to be having my Supergirl trailer breakdown for the next episode, and maybe my Flash trailer breakdown for the next episode. One's going to be coming before the other, but you're definitely going to get one today and one tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that, so turn on notifications to not miss any videos. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.